If you've joined the church from December 2020 to March this year, we invite you to register for New Members Meet and Greet Friday, April 16th. RSVP at newmember.tcww.org. My friend has a beautifully manicured lawn with stepping stones to keep pedestrians off her grass. And each stone is strategically placed to form a guided path from the street curb to her front door. I invite you to join me for the Master Life Study, Order My Steps, a six session study that will empower you to walk the path ordered by God. Our Father has graciously charted the path for each of our lives, and He wants to guide us safely through the valleys, over the mountains, and down the path to righteousness. If you want to live a life that is guided by the Good Shepherd, then join me beginning March 20th for the study Order My Step. Visit women.tcww.org. I look forward to taking the journey with you. Coffee in Christ is a Church Without Walls Bible study. You are personally engaged with sermons I preach on Sunday to discover for yourselves how to authentically live out what the Bible says it means. The name Coffee in Christ expresses the relaxed and conversational small group atmosphere. Grab a cup of coffee or tea and join us on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. Small groups be encouraged. Journey with us on the road to resurrection, the path that Jesus took to change the world. On March 28th, Palm Sunday, we'll celebrate the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. Monday through Friday, we'll share moments to remember, the day of testing, teaching, transition, trials, and then the day of tragedy on Friday, April 2nd, before our Good Friday worship service as we remember the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross at Calvary. In early Sunday resurrection morning, we'll celebrate our risen Savior on Easter Sunday. Be sure to invite your friends and family, especially those who do not know Jesus Christ. Let's travel together on the road to resurrection. Good afternoon, church. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall come together, rejoice, and be glad in it. Welcome to the Road to Resurrection on this holy Tuesday. Now, during this time, I know uh, many of you are at work, at home, in the kitchen. We're all scurrying around during this time, but let us, uh, let us settle ourselves during this time, because though we're in a virtual space, it's still holy space. And let's think of the Lord, our Savior, as we travel with him to the road, down the road of resurrection toward Calvary. If you will with me, turn to the Gospel of Matthew, the 25th chapter, beginning at verse 1. The Word of God says, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to the ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, 
they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. For the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. This is the word of God. Allow us to go to God in a word of prayer. Gracious and eternal Father, we come to you saying thank you first and foremost. Thank you, Lord, for your son. Thank you for the shedding of his innocent blood, for the remission of our sins, Lord God. That we come to you, Heavenly Father, during this holy season, this holy week, Heavenly Father, to remember all that you've done, Lord, and all that you will do. And we give you thanks on this afternoon, Lord. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On this day of teaching, I like to tag this text a day of preparation. There is no substitute for preparation. I learned this truth one day when I was a sophomore at Georgetown College. Uh, my classmate and cousin, Mackenzie Jemison, and I, we would study together. It was a criminal law class, investigation class. And I remember I was doing very well up until the point that we just had too much of a good time one night. And I partially prepared, but I didn't properly prepare. And I knew when I got into that classroom that it was ill preparation up until this moment. Jesus told this parable that teaches this truth. Ten virgins were awaiting the arrival of the bridegroom so that they could celebrate with him and his bride Five of them prepared in advance and brought an adequate supply of oil for their lamps. The other five were not prepared. So they rushed out to buy additional lamp oil. While they were gone, the bridegroom arrived. The five who had planned ahead entered into the house with him. But the door was closed against the five who were not ready. And they missed the celebration. What are the lessons that we can learn from this Holy Week as we reflect on this parade, on this parable? First, make preparations to meet God. This is a time that we create vacancy for him. Holy Week is a time of preparation. The disciples made preparation for Jesus as he made his way into Jerusalem. The palm branches were waved, the children in the marketplace, the crowd in the city, the curious seekers, the religious enthusiasts, and the radical insurrectionists. They all went, all of them were in the city, and preparation had been made for the coming of the king. The disciples made preparation for the Passover and the unleavened bread. Preparations were made in an upper room. Two disciples were to go into a particular place, and when they saw a man carrying a water jug, by the way, this was work carried out by women. So when the disciples saw men carrying water, they knew that they were at the right place and the man was the right person. And now this parable is a reminder that life is to be lived by preparation. Second, how you prepare for our Lord will determine whether you are wise or foolish. You are foolish when you know the bridegroom is coming and no preparation is made for his arrival. You are wise when you know the bridegroom is coming and you have prepared according to God's directives. People live life like this, surprisingly. They know a day is coming when the sand in the hourglass is going to run out, but they live as if the sand of life is never ending. On the other hand, 
The wise keep their eyes on the jar of life to make sure that there's enough oil to keep the lamps of life burning. What's amazing about this, those who prepared for the bridegroom, the lamps represent life. And when it speaks of sleep, slumber, it says all, all of them nodded, all of them slept, that's death. But when he arrives, many of them did not know him, but others had a relationship with him before he arrived. They all knew he was coming, but all did not have a relationship with him. Do you remember when Jesus had preached his sermon on the mount, he concluded teaching with an example of wise and foolish builders. He said, everyone who hears my words and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on a rock. This is Matthew chapter 7, by the way. The rain came, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. Thirdly, church, an invitation to meet the bridegroom is going to be announced. Now, the gospel says that they knew he was coming. Though they knew he was coming, there was no haste to get the oil prior to. Which means having no oil, life has no substance. Each and every one of us, when that time comes, I like the way when we were in uh, our youth class, children and youth, they would always say when the time comes, everyone, well, go to the judgment seat of God and the tape of your life will be played. Will there be any oil? There will come a day when the announcement is made. Here's the bridegroom. Come out and meet him. This is an invitation to come to our Lord. Throughout the scripture, God is calling us to himself. Come and let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Now lastly, church, there will be a time when it's too late to get prepared. One of my favorite texts, I didn't preach it until my father said it to my brother and I. He said, redeem the time. Buy back the time. Because the days are evil. You don't prepare when the announcement is made, the bridegroom is coming. You prepare at the very moment the promise of his coming is made. And let me pause, church, he is coming. This is a common mistake people make in life. They wait for their turn to perform before they prepare. The time to prepare is not when your name is called, but when the promise is made. In the game of baseball, pitchers are throwing balls all through the game. They don't wait for their name to be called. They throw in anticipation that their name will be called. The day will come when the bridegroom will return. But you prepare while you are anticipating his return. The, the virgins woke, trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, we cannot do that. There may not be enough for both of us. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were, while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived the virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut this is precisely what you will not be able to do the bridegroom is coming it is too late to prepare for his arrival instinctively we don't like parables of judgment 
We read the parables of grace. But this week is a reminder that God has prepared everything for the coming return of his son in order that you and I might prepare to receive him in the same way that a bride receives her bridegroom. We should receive Christ with a joyful anticipation. Those who are unprepared will come and say, Sir, sir, open the door for us. He is the truth. He will say, I don't know you. He means in that day, I will only know those who have prepared to receive me until himself, herself. He has made himself known to us. He has revealed himself for us to know him. He has revealed in the water of the Jordan when God said of Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He revealed himself at Caesarea Philippi, though thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He revealed himself at Calvary when everyone else mistook him. A centurion soldier recognized him. Surely this must be the son of God. Do you know him? And are you making preparations for the coming of the bridegroom? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal Father, we come to you right now saying thank you, Lord, for the time to worship, for the time to remember. Lord, during this time, though we like parables, Lord God, of grace, during this time, Lord, we know that you challenge us, Heavenly Father, as we make vacancy for your presence, Heavenly Father. Transform our hearts and our minds during this time as we walk with you, Lord God, down the road to resurrection. During this time, Lord, anyone who does not know you have a personal relationship with you, Lord, making preparations for your coming, Lord God, speak to their heart. If they don't have a church home, Heavenly Father, move in their hearts. Lord, we give you thanks for all these things. In your son Jesus' name I pray, amen. Church, let us pause for a moment. There is a link that is going to be po that is posted in the chat box. If you would just go to that link in the chat box, you click it. If you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we want you to click that link. And in the same invitation, if you do not have a church home, we want to extend that invitation. Click that link, and we will reach out to you immediately. Uh, we look forward to speaking with you. And during this, what greater time to know Jesus than during the Holy Week, the road to resurrection? What greater time is it than now to know the Savior? But we look forward to reaching out to you and you all connecting with us. To know Jesus Christ, he justifies you. That's immediacy. Uh, as my cousin, Chad Pinson, he pastors in Rhode Island, he said he was on the road. God blessed him to preach the gospel. And while he was out with one assignment, he got called for another one. He said, but El, while I was gone, I returned home. He said, many of us who know, my cable got cut off. He said, because I didn't take care of the home utilities. And that, that number on the black screen was bouncing. He said, I called him. And when I paid the bill, immediately the cable was cut on. That's exactly what happens with Jesus Christ. It's immediately. He justifies you. And when you and Jesus Christ, throughout the day-to-day -day process, he sanctifies you until we reach that great day of being in glory with him. We offer Christ to you. We offer uh, a church home to you. We ask that you click that link. We want to connect with you during this time. God bless you. And uh, if you will, though we're in a virtual space, you can share the graphic, the link of the Church of Our Walls, Road to Resurrection, because this is your way of evangelizing in this virtual space. So we want to do that and, uh, on tomorrow on our Holy Wednesday. And we look forward to seeing you, and God bless you during this time. Look this way. I want to bless you as we prepare to go into the world as salt and light. And did we have a marvelous worship experience today? We are so fortunate to live in an age where we have this kind. into your home. In fact, a theme we can use is bring God's house to your house. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face smile upon you, 
and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance on you and grant you his peace. And may the Lord bless you when you go out and come in, when you rise up early and settle late, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter, and in your tears until that day when we shall stand at the feet of Jesus where there is no sunrise or sunset. Be encouraged.